Hi, we are continuing our development of shear force and bending moment diagrams. Our new problem is a cantilever beam with a distributed load and an end concentrated load like shown here. We have already done this problem for finding out reaction forces and uh, finding out uh, shear force and bending moment at particular locations. Now we are going to do shear force and bending moment diagrams. So let me just make sure that uh, we are on the right page by reminding you that the slope of shear force diagram equal to the distributed load. The slope of bending moment diagram equals the shear force diagram. Jumps in shear force equal to concentrated load. And upward jumps, upward concentrated loads give me positive jumps. Jumps in bending moment diagram equal to concentrated moment. And in this case, clockwise is positive, counterclockwise is negative. Okay, so remember that ah, clockwise is positive counterclockwise is negative even when i said it i wrote the wrong thing you know i'm so used to writing clockwise positive so please remember the sign conventions are really critical for us to get this thing sorted out straight so that's the shear force that's the bending moment diagram so what we are going to do is first step we draw the axis as usual second step find reaction forces and moments then step 3 draw the load picture draw the full fpd with all forces shown and that's going to look like this Let me start up here and go all the way like that. And because I will need it later, I'm going to try and grab it. I ah, forget that we'll, we'll redraw it, don't worry. So then we have a concentrated load here. That's the external reaction, 18. Then we have a counterclockwise bending moment here that goes like that. And that will be 27 kilonewton meter. Then there is this distributed load that goes halfway along the beam. And that is 8 kilonewton per meter. And then there is the external load here, 6 kilonewtons. Okay, so now we are going to draw the shear force diagram for this. As usual, we redraw the, it's again convenient to do this in a grid paper so that your dimensions are right. And then we mark these points by drawing parallel lines like that so that it is easy to see and then our first step we are going to draw the shear force diagram and we're going to start here and we're going to go up 18 i'm going to go up 9 because i'm going to assume each unit is 2 so 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 so i go up 9 i'm going to draw that in blue so you can see i went up 9 that's this guy then this says go down by 8 kilonewton for every meter. This is a downward slope. Remember this, the slope of this figure is that figure. So we are going to go by a downward slope. How far should I go? The area of this thing will tell me. So I am going to draw notice that I have to go down. And if I compute the area of this, area will be 
8 times 1 and a half that is uh, 12. So what I mean is after 18 I have to come down 12. That means I am left with 6 that is up to this point that is 12 that is the area. So 1, 2, 3. So I am going to go down like a straight line like that. The slope of this is minus 8. That is that color. Okay, I come down 12. This height is 6. This total height is 18. Then I am going to go flat like that all the way and then I jump down by another 6. That is that guy. Okay, so just to make sure we will need this information, the area of this will be 18 plus 6 over 2 times 1 and a half which is uh, 24, 12 times 1 and a half, um, that is 9 plus 3, 12, 12 times 1 and a half is 12, 12 plus 6 is 18 units, 18 kilo newton meter here. So we will use that and the area of this is 6 times 1 and a half which is 9 kilo newton meter. So we will need these areas so that it is convenient for us to do the next one which is the bending moment diagram. So since we already know that we will need lots of space, so I am leaving myself some space here and I am going to draw the bending moment diagram here. Okay, as usual that is the initial location. That is the final location. This is the point of the jump. So first thing we notice is that unlike all the previous cases, there is the concentrated moment and it is 27 and it is counterclockwise. So remember concentrated counterclockwise external moments are negative jumps. So I go up here and I jump down by 27. So I want to keep like maybe 3 per units so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3 are 27 so I am going to go down here like this. This is 27 units and then I land up by subtract by adding this much area to this minus 27. So I am going to take that, add it to this and I say okay when I come here it will be minus 27 plus 18 which is minus 9, 1, 2, 3, so this is 18 units, that is this area, okay. So I know where these two points are and I know that the third point minus 9, this area is plus 9 so I land up with 0, so I know these three points. Now the question is can I draw the curve? Notice that since this the slope of this curve is that curve, you see that the slope is not constant, it is a straight line. So the curve will be a parabola. So then there are lots of possibilities which way the parabola is to be. So we will look, figure that out. Notice that the first that the first point that you realize is that this jump is 18. So the initial slope is 18, so it is going to look like that. The final slope is 6, so that is going to look like this. That is the slope of 6 and let me redraw this 18 slope properly so that I can draw. So what will happen is my parabola is going to look very shallow but it is going to look something like this. It looks almost like a straight line in this graph that is because my parabola drawing skills are terrible but you can see that it is a parabola that looks like this. How do I know that it is not a parabola that looks like this but a parabola that looks like that? Well first thing is this slope is 18, that slope is 6. The second thing is if you go up here you can see that the, that the load curve gives me curvature. So you can see that the curvature says 
go down, go down, go down. So the curvature is negative, or it tells me that the parabola is pointed downwards. You just you can just look at the load diagram and you can figure out that the parabola is pointed downwards. That is, it's it's concave downwards. So that's the shape, and then. From there, it's a straight line all the way here. Why is it a straight line? Because slope is zero. Okay, and you can see curvature is zero. Okay, I'm sorry. Slope is six, curvature is zero. So that's a straight line. So this, so just to remind you, this gives you a parabola pointed down. This gives you a straight line of slope six. This is initial slope, final slope, this allows you to compute the values, okay. So that's our story, so this is our final graph parabola in the beginning followed by a straight line okay and it looks pretty similar because of the uh, size of these things it's a very shallow parabola it's almost a straight line parabola okay with that we are done